So we want to begin to talk about some basic floating gate types of concepts and circuits and where does the concepts that we're looking at, where do they come from? So this is one of the things that we want to talk through. Now if you look at the elements that are sitting over here at this edge, you're looking at circuits that I'm sure almost everyone has looked at and particularly as a double E has, has thought about a lot. You talk about um, capacitive voltage dividers being done with two resistors. And I explicitly call them in conductances, which shouldn't be terribly shocking what that would look like. Um, the same sort of thing you could imagine in terms of two resistors around an ideal op amp. Right? An ideal op amp has, a, has no input current whatsoever. Right? And typically, if you can build these if you've actually got capacitive inputs, um, say from a MOSFET input structure. And we would look at these equations and it would make perfectly good sense of what the gain we have in the first case and make perfectly good sense of the gain we have in the second case. And so now we begin to ask a question of, well, what happens if instead of resistors, I make them capacitors? And surprisingly, I, and of course I can, and the expressions I get for the gain look very similar. In fact, if I just were to take Laplace transform of those resistive elements, I would imagine everything would give me about the same result, mostly. The same thing is true in terms of capacitors across an amplifier. And these two cases you know, set a lot of what we do in electrical engineering and really important in terms of these concepts. So in this particular case, let's, let's think about what we actually have. We actually do get capacitors here, but we actually have one little interesting problem that if you think about it from basic circuits, which is two capacitors here, voltage divider looks fine, but there's some total amount of charge at this node that I don't know what that value is. In fact, if this input voltage is sitting at ground, you actually don't know what the voltage is, do you? You've got two capacitors, and, but except if you get told the charge. Now remember, this is one of those key concepts that sits in every basic circuit class that says, oh, any circuit I have is going to have a DC path to ground, and I'm going to use that as the starting point for all of my analysis in, term, in my mathematics. And when I don't have that, well, that's an, that's an exception to, this, to the rule. Well, in this case, we have an exception to the rule. <laughs> and a very fascinating exception. And what it says is that if having some charge on this node changes, um, gives me a free parameter, is that a good or a bad thing? Probably depends on, on a lot of different perspectives. But being very comfortable with this kind of circuit as the same sort of thing in this device, depending on the charge here, is important. Now what's going to happen is that charge at this node is going to end up resulting in a charge here, this voltage, which is going to be that charge over the parallel combination of the capacitors. And I'll get a similar re reaction here, except this will be charge over C2 in the feedback. But in both case, I get free parameter. Now, really interesting question is if I could actually change that charge, which in fact we do, and we do a lot, then the question is, oh, now this is actually not, this is something I can utilize. If it's something I, I don't know what to do with, then it's a problem. And you might ask yourself, okay, well, what am I referring to? Well, let's talk about this graph down here, which is to say, let me just assume, for example, I have a normal PFET device. Um, and I do a nice IV curve through this device. This is an old process, half micron CMOS process. And you get a gap of about 0.68, because you get the subthreshold slope beautifully here. And then it starts to roll off as you get into the above threshold regime, and becoming less ideal. Very nice structure that you, you know, very typical structure. But then you ask a question, what happens when I make a circuit like this, where now I have a gate and two capacitors here? I've effectively made a capacitor divider, haven't I? And that capacitor divider actually allows me to say, but this still looks effectively like a MOSFET, because from here to here, through the surface potential, is a capacitor divider. So as a result, I get this curve in red, is what I would measure, in fact, did measure. And my kappa now is 0.448. So you can see that I, there is some divider due to the capacitance looking into the gate due to other parasitic devices. An interesting thing that happens just to kind of show you this capacitive behavior is imagine if I take one of those gates and I now still sweep it and the other one I keep fixed. I now looks like a MOSFET. And actually, it looks like a MOSFET with two gates, which is kind of a cool thing if you think about it. And I can also potentially look at the relative strengths of those. Because these being the same size, interesting thing, if I sweep just one of them, I get this as my subthreshold slope. And now that slope is about 0.22, so almost, just like almost exactly half of the first one, actually within percentage of mismatch for capacitors. 
And this is a very interesting perspective of what you can do. Um, it allows you to ask questions of maybe I want more linearity. Maybe I want to have two things that are similar structures. It gives me a whole possibility. At the same time, it still looks like a MOSFET. It acts exactly like a MOSFET with slightly modified parameters. And you think to yourself, this could be quite useful in a number of applications. But then let's look at the other side. Where let me take this exact same circuit here, same structure, and put it here. I would, if I took a normal measurement, I might get this curve in black. But then it turns out I can take the same device and by a process that we would call electron tunneling, which is basically going to remove electrons from the floating gate, you can get more positive charge, I effectively can move this curve to, to the right, which is a fascinating thing. Now it's like, wait, I can move this device. In fact, I can move it quite precisely, um, potentially up to, within my control mechanisms up to single electron capability. I can also then take the same curve and go back and inject, do hot electron injection, which is carriers in the channel and I'm able to uh, get them into the, into the gate oxide. This turns out to be huge as well because it allows me to move it in the other direction. It allows me to put electrons on, making the voltage more negative, meaning that I actually will get more current out of this PFET device. And we like PFET devices because it's really easy to inject in them across pretty much any process node that I have seen or have looked at. Uh, so you always get this, no matter what you do. So that's a good thing, um, at least for us. Now, if you're other cases, maybe you don't like it so much. But this, it allows us to talk about actually moving this back and forth. And so now I can talk about a transistor where it has a free parameter. If you want to think about it as threshold voltage, that's acceptable, because that is one way to think about it. You might also think about it in subthreshold cases, a change in I and I naught, and that's acceptable as well. There are different representations have different meanings depending on the circuit you're looking at, and it's always good to have multiple things in mind as you look at this. But it actually gives you the ability to make a transistor that's programmable and actually has elements that you can compute with. It allows you to have capacitive coupling for your MOSFETs. There's a tremendous amount from a circuit perspective. And one of the things that you will see throughout all of these discussions is that I almost always draw these as circuits because I want you to be able to see these are very typical circuits. Sometimes people make special symbols and that's always great. But I really want people to not be surprised that these are just very typical circuits using the intuition that you've learned to build up in doing circuits over the years.